Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie Aussie Playground and welcome to my review of the Hobby King Basher Bad Bug. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that I had the original Mini Basher MT, which is this little guy right here. Now, this truck has since been discontinued and it's actually been superseded with this one. Uh, it's essentially the same truck, but they've done some significant improvements and I think the end result, the end score for this one will uh, definitely reflect that. So. Uh, with the original Nitro Circus Basher, the little mini basher, I did have a, a number of issues with it, uh, primarily in the drivetrain, uh, but it looks as though Hobby King have actually fixed a lot of the issues. I also had issues with the, the dog bones popping out on the old one, and, and it just wasn't refined enough. It was a really good idea, it was a really good concept, and it was a really cool truck to use when it worked, uh, but unfortunately it needed a, a few repairs here and there every, almost every time I used it. So. Uh, thankfully Hobby King kind of pulled it from the shelves, uh, they, they dumped the Nitro Circus branding and they went with uh, their own uh, version of it. You've got the bed bug which is a replica of a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen uh, buggy of course and there's also the Hellseeker. Now the Hellseeker has pretty much the exact same body that you see here but it's just a, a black body now, there's no more Nitro Circus as I said earlier. Now, they've made a lot of improvements to this truck and uh, I'm going to kick this off straight away because I know that this review is long overdue and I don't want to make it super long. So let's kick it off with the electrics as always. The electrics for this one, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 just like I did with the old version. I don't have too much of an issue with the electrics they've chosen here. I just wish it had a little bit more speed, not a huge amount, just a little bit more speed. It would have been a, a hell of a lot of fun to have this, just maybe a couple of teeth on the pinion would have made a, a, a huge difference for this truck, I think. Uh, considering it runs on 4S, let's not forget that this actually runs on 4S, not in uh, parallel, uh, so not two 2S batteries in, so it's not 2S, uh, it's 4S, it runs two 2S batteries in series, uh, but it's not crazy power, it's geared uh, and designed in a way that it's just really good for, for popping wheelies and, and um, just having a lot of fun. You're not going to pin the throttle and do crazy backflips with it, it doesn't have that sort of power. Um, but it is very manageable and it's a lot a lot of fun to drive this truck but I just wish it had a little bit more speed come on Hobby King do something for us make it a, just that tiny little bit faster it would have made a huge difference I feel uh, now for drivetrain in complete contrast to the original one if you go back and look at my review for this truck uh, for the drivetrain I actually gave that one a 1 out of 5 whilst this one I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 They've completely done uh, a 180 on this and, and fixed all the issues that I had with that original truck. I had dog bones popping out, I had gears that were being stripped, now I have none of those problems. Uh, they've done a fantastic job, they've refined this significantly uh, to the point where now I have no option but to give it full marks. So well done Hobby King, this is really really deserving, very very happy uh, to see this from any manufacturer. Uh, especially Hobby King, of course, because uh, you know they, they do get a, they do cop a lot of flack, and I have to congratulate them on this one and um, and give them full marks for the drivetrain on this car. It was flawless. It, I have no diffs problems, no bearings, nothing of the sort. So very well done. Uh, moving on to handling, uh, handling pretty much remains static from the old score. It's still a four out of five. Um, I do wish that they had slightly better tires on this one, or at least that they gave you better tire options, um, which we'll talk about in regards to the spare parts category later on down the line. But um, I just wish that there were a few more options for tires for this. It is a little bit tricky to find spare tires, um, and, and the tires they give you, they're not the best. Uh, let's face the facts here. So I'm going to knock it for, for one point just purely because the tires aren't great. They look fantastic, very authentic as you can see, um, look great, they're just not the best gripping tyres, so I have to uh, knock a point off for that one. Uh, durability, I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5 as well. The only reason why I'm not going to give this one a 5 out of 5, believe it or not, is I'm actually going to go against my own beliefs here, go against what I normally go for and say, uh, you know, I judge the RCs based on my experience, but I've got two friends who have the exact same truck and um, we've driven together 
um, you know, we, we've, we've bashed these trucks together. And although I haven't had any problems with mine, they have broken the wheelie bar off a couple of times. They've, uh, one of them actually replaced the, the little shock, the little red shock on the back here, and then uh, ended up snapping it off at a later stage. And uh, I know that one of them also had a problem with, uh, I think it was the rear diff. So because I was there and because I saw what they were doing with the trucks, and I will admit, they were a little bit crazier than me with the, uh, with the power system. Uh, I am gonna knock a point off not because of anything other than just be mindful that this is not a super expensive RC um, and although it can take a lot of abuse you will you know everything breaks you you are gonna find that sometimes things will fail and the wheelie bar is one of the things that I did see fail front bumpers a arms knuckles everything else else held up uh, but as I said they did bust one of the diffs but uh, again, they were being pretty silly with it. They were taking jumps with it and landing with it under throttle. They were trying to flip it over and, and being all sorts of crazy. And uh, well, you know, they, they ended up busting up a diff. So um, that's the only reason why I'm gonna give it a four out of four, not a five out of five, uh, sorry, a four out of five, not a five out of five. Um, purely because I witnessed with my own eyes what had happened to these trucks, uh, you know, when you do abuse them um, considerably. Um, so moving on to maintenance. Now, just like the old truck, maintenance is gonna get a three out of five. And although, you know, you gotta take into account that this is a very small truck, everything's very compact, it's very packed in there, it's, it's, there's not a lot of room to, to get your screwdrivers in and, and do what you need to do. It's not an easy access vehicle, it's a high center of gravity. A monster truck essentially that's what this is uh, but it is tricky to work on this thing especially if you want to get to the center transmission or get to the center uh, gears uh, you do need to put aside a little bit of time front and rear diffs are going to be a bit of a pain as well um, you, you are going to dig through some plastic to get to them uh, but I guess one of the biggest gripes I have is that these standard shocks do tend to leak so you are going to need to maintain them right hence the maintenance score so there is a bit of maintenance that needs to be done. The rear shock on the uh, wheelie bar also leaks quite badly. So again, you're gonna need to maintain this, uh, this vehicle and uh, that's why I'm gonna give this one a three out of five for maintenance, just like I did the old one. Uh, that's the only thing that I think Hobby King really need to look at, um, you know, improving the quality of the shocks perhaps, um, especially the, the wheelie bar one that leaks very, very badly. So um, they, they need to look at this, maybe instead of a shock, introduce some sort of other spring mechanism in here um, and just do away with the shock completely. So uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it, it is. it does require a little bit of maintenance, even though you may not need to get into the truck, you do need to sort of keep up um, with some of the fluids on the shocks and so forth. So that, that's why the score. Uh, now, part support. I'm gonna give this one a four out of five, and I know that a lot of you are gonna hate me for this because, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people, I always, whenever I review my Hobby King vehicles, there's a lot of people out there that comment about how Hobby King don't have parts, how everything's on back order. I looked at the stock uh, parts, uh, the parts listing, the inventory that they have for these vehicles at the moment. There are only two parts they don't have. One is the front steering uh, C hubs, I think they are, and body pins. That's the only thing they don't have in stock at the moment. Everything else, every other single part they have, with the exception of the motor and the ESC, and of course the steering servo. Now, these trucks are now available in a ready to run and almost ready to run, and there's also a kit version. What I don't understand is why can I not buy a spare ESC and a spare motor as it came in this almost ready to run kit from Hobby King? Why can I not buy those two parts? Uh, because if my ESC fails, or if my motor fails, or if I have any sort of significant, da significant damage, I can't get those parts. I have to get aftermarket. I have to get something else. And that annoys me. That really annoys me. There should be electrics available for these vehicles on the shelf at Hobby King. Albeit they may not sell a ton of them, but they should be there in case people want to replace the existing ones. Um, so that's something that's not part of the inventory. They're not out of stock. They just don't exist, period. I've never seen them on the shelf or on the inventory at Hobby King. Um, and that's something that I really hope they bring out in the future um, because they've got everything else. Every other screw, bolt, washer, bearing, spring, you name it, they have every part for this truck except the motor and ESC. 
baffles me as to why they don't have those two things. So for that, I'm gonna give this one only a four out of five. And let's not forget, they have a ton of aluminum upgrades for this as well, uh, which is very, very cool and something uh, you know worthwhile investing in if you really like to abuse these trucks. Uh, now finally for value, um, the almost ready to run, I think I had a look at, uh, which was this one exactly, it's about $160 Australian, 165, somewhere around there. The kit version is about 120, 125, uh, depending on the value of the dollar at the time, it, you know, those prices might vary a bit. I mean, that is exceptional value for a truck that you don't really need to do too much. I haven't upgraded a single thing on this thing. I, I haven't changed anything on it. I haven't replaced any broken parts. Um, the truck is still here and I've abused it quite uh, significantly. I even let my kids drive it playing a soccer game with this, with this truck and the old one. And, um, you know, it's still here in one piece. I haven't replaced a single component on it. So very impressive um, for the money that you pay. I think this offers exceptional value. There's really not a lot to knock on, but I am going to give it only a four out of five um, purely because I feel that, uh, you know, the shocks could definitely be a little bit better. Um, uh, you know, just lower the maintenance factor a little bit. And I think you can really get this thing up to five out of five. And of course, um, just having the motor in ESC in stock, that would be something that would be really good because if you buy the kit or you get given the kit as a gift and you don't know what electrics to put in this thing, why not just get the stock electrics and put it in even if you have to pay for them yourself. I know it may not be the most economical way of building up this truck because you're just getting an almost ready to run, you're just building it up yourself, but those two components should be available. Um, and. You know, I'm, I'm going to knock a point for it purely because of those uh, contrib contributing factors. Um, so that is uh, pretty much it for this review of the Hobby King Basher Bad Bug. Total score at the end is a 28 out of a potential 35, which equates to an 80% out of 100. Uh, so that's about an 8 out of 10, where the old one scored about a 6 out of 10. So a significant improvement on this truck. Still a little bit of wiggle room on this one, um, but it does offer exceptional value and uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. If you've never had one of these, um, try it. Believe me, they are so much fun um, and they can take on some really uh, gnarly terrain as well. And uh, they have some decent speed. I do wish they were a little bit quicker, but they have some decent speed, enough for anybody out there to have a, uh, have a bit of fun with it and end up with a big smile on their face, uh, just like I did when I uh, drove this thing for the first time. All right, so that's it for this review. Thank you all very much for watching. Please be sure to hit the thumbs up button before you go. Subscribe if you're new. And of course, don't forget to click that little bell so you're up to date with all my new videos. I thank you all very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.